Back when I was in school, I, like I imagine most of the people out there, from time to time would have to do those assignments of what are you going to be in the future, and then find out more about that industry and work out a game plan for how you will succeed in that industry. Those types of projects that came up every few years throughout the public education system, and I participated, and even at that young, tender age, I knew, well, I, I think I want to be a writer. So I did my research into that and did such things as interviewing someone in the industry. So I ended up interviewing my mom's friend who had once written a book of poetry that was either self-published or published by some very small press. Things like that, which even at the time I realized probably weren't that helpful for me. Perhaps would have been more helpful for people in different industries. But anyway, for me, it was... I kind of recognized that that wasn't going to be a particularly fruitful activity. And yet, I participated, thinking that I don't know how it's going to work out, but someday I'll be a writer. Well, I guess I achieved that dream, in a way, through the website. But I guess if I had to... I mean, what industry is it that I'm in? Am I a, am I a podcaster? Is that a career? I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm finding out as it happens. I relate this story to you because it is an interesting point that I have a personal experience of now at this point, which is the idea that not only is it difficult to predict what you're going to be in the future or how you're going to achieve those dreams, but even the idea of conceptualizing what will exist in the future for you to be a part of is impossible. There is no way that 16-year-old me could have possibly envisioned in a couple decades you're going to be a podcaster sitting in Japan. It's it's mind-blowing. It, it doesn't make any sense. There's no way I could have made some sort of game plan for that and planned it all out. Now, this is important because obviously it's not about one person's individual story. It's about every person's individual stories collectively. They all have this aspect to them, and increasingly so, as the, the, the nature of the economy changes uh, at a faster and faster rate, the ideas of even what industries there were starts to change. Now, that's not always a happy story by any means, but it is nonetheless a fact of life, and it demonstrates an even bigger point which is that we shouldn't be thinking about who is best to manage the economy. Which team do we want in position of power X, whether that's the Oval Office or whatever country you have, whatever type of uh, place of power they might have. What person is going to oversee and manage every facet of that to make life better for everyone? It's a fool's game to even try to answer that question, because the real answer is that, of course, it's not just that we don't have the right people in charge of the economy, it's that no one is in charge of the economy. No one could be in charge of the economy. Or, to speak more realistically, the Cadillacy. That's a word to add to your list, uh, one that I will flesh out in the future in more detail, but just, just look that one up. Um, really, the, we have all of these people interacting in ways that can't obviously be predicted or and shouldn't be dictated, because these are free individual human beings making their own choices. And on top of that, you have changing relations, changing technologies, changing... Ch everything is in flux. So that even if you could somehow know and understand what is best for each individual out there at this moment in time, that could be completely different at a future moment in time, because things have changed. It's actually a good thing not to have a manager who's going to steward over the economy, because here's the real secret. The parasitic ruling class wants you to believe that you need them. That is the greatest trick that they have ever pulled, is to make you believe that there really needs to be a parasitic ruling class managing and directing every aspect of your life. Well, it's not just that we have the wrong people in those parasitic ruling positions of power to dictate to people. It's that even if they were angels descended from heaven to only do what is best for you and your country or whatever unit you want to divide yourself up into, the point is that they can't. They can't manage it. You cannot manage the spontaneous uh, f uh, interactions that happen between people every day, which is why there is 
a revolution happening right now. It is a revolution that is transforming the nature of the world, of relations between people at the most fundamental levels, but it has nothing to do with the political gains that are dangled in front of our face as the only way that you can have an influence or direct, you know, what's going to happen in your life is to vote for candidate A or candidate B. That's a false game that they get you to play, and uh, it's unfortunate that so many people choose to play it. Because, again, the greatest trick the ruling oligarchs have ever pulled is to make you believe that they, that you need those ruling oligarchs. You don't. So the real revolution that's taking place right now is one of radical decentralization of everything. And it can be a scary thing, but in a lot of ways, it is a remarkable, a wonderful thing. Now, we see this most obviously in certain aspects of the, uh, the, the sharing economy, the peer-to-peer -peer economy, whatever it's being called these days, that have made the news and have become stories into them, unto themselves, like Airbnb, like Uber. Those are the most obvious examples of things like this. Things that were previously centralized that are becoming decentralized and people connecting directly with each other. Now, I think we can get way too hung up on this particular version of that or that particular company that's operating this, this idea. It's the idea itself that is the revolution that is happening not just in the hotel industry and is not just happening in the taxi cab industry. It's happening in all sorts of different places and all sorts of different ways that would have been unthinkable even 10 or 20 years ago in the same way being a podcaster for a living would have been unthinkable 10 or 20 years ago. The world is changing, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And we don't need someone to sit there on a perch, parasitically ruling over everyone, trying to tell them what to do, trying and failing to manage this economy, Cadillacy. So, uh, it, it's happening all over the place. It's happening in lots of different ways. Uh, the financial sector even is becoming decentralized. We now have the technology that is starting to route around those centralized structures that were necessary back in the old day. The manufacturing sector is becoming decentralized. How can you have mass scale, mass production if you don't have these mass factories that of course, well, I mean, it's huge capital expenditures. You're going to have to have massive capital accumulation in order to, to own them and run them. And you know, that's just the way we have to organize society. Not anymore. We're starting to see the thin edge of the wedge of disruptive technologies changing the nature of manufacturing itself from an industrial to a post-industrial society where people are, are already can and in the future will be able to in, uh, in more fully manufacture things at not just the local level, at the individual level. Individual manufacturing is here exemplified by technologies like 3D printing. This is happening everywhere, and it's happening very rapidly. In 10, I, I venture to say in 10 years, this video will seem hopelessly, ridiculously outdated because of the, the types of things that I'm referring to and trying to explain it in a way that isn't just everyday common obvious sense. I think we're on the cusp of starting to realize that this idea that the political game and choosing masters is, it's not even, it's not even wrong. It's not even right or wrong. It's not even, oh, this candidate would have been better than that candidate. It's that we don't need them. We do not need the parasitic ruling class. Now, obviously this is a huge idea and I'm not going to be able to introduce every aspect of it to you in this seven or eight minutes or whatever it is we have here today. So I'm going to, again, once again, I'm going to put a bunch of links in the show notes so you can start taking a look at the different ways these disruptive ideas and technologies and social relations are changing the world around us. Not necessarily for the better, but sometimes for the better, but sometimes just changing. And that is happening. Whether you like it or not, whether you're participating in it or not, it's happening. And that's where the real action is. The choices that you are making with re relation to the people that are around you, the things that are happening around you, that is reality. The political theater is just people on a stage trying to rule over you and trying to convince you that you need to be ruled over. I'm here to try to break that paradigm. So this is just one, one foot through that door and I'm inviting you to step through. Once again, I'll leave you with the word of the day, Cadillacy. Look that one up. And I'll leave you with the show notes in the, uh, in the show notes for this video. 
So once again, this is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Thank you for joining me. Talk to you again soon.